Here we are at Jaffa Gate at the entrance to the old city of Jerusalem. My name is Elisa Masurbenowitz and I'm the executive director of Kola Ot. Jaffa Gate is named so because it opens to the road that leads to the port city of Jaffa. To this day, the main road we reach from here is named Jaffa Road, which boasts Jerusalem's pedestrian walk and new light rail. But Jaffa Road leads to the city of Jaffa, which is known as a port city. Which brings us to the story of Jonah, the prophet, whose book is traditionally read on Yom Kippur. In the opening of the story, God calls to Jonah to go to Nineveh to warn the people of that town that they must repent and return from their evil deeds. Jonah tries to avoid this calling. He goes down to Jaffa to the port to board the first boat he can that will help him run away, to go as far from Nineveh as he can. We read the story of Jonah on Yom Kippur because it's a story of repentance, of tshuva, of God having mercy and compassion on his people. But like any good story, it's not all smooth sailing. I'll be sharing two very different artistic treatments of this story by local Jerusalem artists, nuanced etchings by Mordechai Beck and cartoon-like playful paintings by Eliyahu Sidi. In its essence, the story is about the tension and the conflict between Din, strict justice and truth, and Rachamim, compassion, the ability to repent and to forgive. In this image by Mordechai Beck, we see Jonah receiving the original call. Note the sense of responsibility looming over him, the weight of the role he is asked to take on, portrayed here also as a fish, foreshadowing what is to come. The fish comes to symbolize an all-encompassing reality. How simple it is to be lured by its massiveness and avoid transformation or making life's critical decisions. But after the drama at the sea, on the ship, and being swallowed by the fish, Jonah finds himself back on dry land with a second godly call. Go to Nineveh and warn them, ask them to repent. In this image, we see Jonah again, small and timid, across from Nineveh, the big city. So Jonah goes and warns the people of Nineveh, in 40 days the city will be overturned. The people of Nineveh take the warning seriously. They turn themselves upside down, they fast and put on sackcloths. Even the king removes his cloak, puts on sackcloth and sits on the ground. Let everyone turn back from his evil ways and from the injustice of which he is guilty. And God hears their calls and repentance and cancels the decree. We might have thought that at this point, Jonah would have been happy, relieved. He fulfilled his mission. He avoided the destruction of the city. He saved thousands of lives. But instead, he's angry. Jonah is a man of truth, as his name implies, Ben Amitai, son of truthfulness. He prays to God and he says, this is why I tried to run away. I knew you would be merciful and have compassion, but what about justice? What about the truth? They don't really deserve it. I don't believe their repentance is true. In this image, we see the city of Nineveh represented by the three elements we're exploring, tshuva, tefillah, and staka. They have managed to overturn the decree. But Jonah, the bird, the dove, is off to the side. In a little tent he built to protect himself from the sun. At this point, God teaches Jonah a personal lesson about forgiveness and compassion. God grants him with a kikayon, a tree that creates shade, which he then swiftly takes away. If Jonah felt compassion towards this tree, which suddenly appeared, all the more so God will feel compassion for his people that he has created in his own image. This reminds me of a beautiful midrash about the creation of the world. The king had two empty cups. He said, if I fill them with hot water, they will break. If I fill them with cold water, they will crack. What did he do? He mixed the hot and cold together, poured them into the cups, and they survived. Similarly, when creating the world, God said, if I create the world with the attribute of compassion, many people will sin. If I create it upon the attribute of justice, how will the world survive? Therefore, I will create it with both compassion and justice and hope that it will endure. As we enter Yom Kippur, I invite you to consider, how do you create balance in your life between justice and compassion? Where are the places that you strive for truth? And where can you show forgiveness, mercy, and compassion? Shana Tova.